because the church goes beyond the preacher the church goes beyond the choir the church goes beyond the position the church is all about Jesus Christ Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing. Ever done in your arms, I feel protected. In your arms, never disconnected. In your arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. There's no oh. in your arms, yeah. In your arms, I feel protected, yeah, yeah. In your arms, never did. In your arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather be. I'm falling in love, yeah. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. There's no 
place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be, yeah. If it wasn't for your grace, Protect us from our harm. There's no place I'd rather be. Holding in your arms. Jesus, I never forget what you've done for me. Yeah. And turn me around, place my feet on solid ground, yeah. There's no place I'd rather be. Ah, come on, I know y'all with me. There's no place I'd rather be other than your arms, yeah. Donovan and the band were playing, I kept thinking um, about do-overs. Last week, as we were streaming this service, there were just constant technical difficulties that we had to deal with. And I'm not sure if you've ever had to deal with some technical difficulties. That, that means everything that you're supposed to do, you're doing. But regardless of your efforts, things just aren't working out right. And, and I was standing here thinking like, everything has gone well today. And, and the band has, has given us a do-over. And it's not so much about what they're doing, but it's, it's a reminder that there are some of us who are watching this service, yeah, that, that didn't get it right the first time, or maybe things didn't go the way you thought it would the first time. But the God that we serve allows do-overs. And I just want someone, whoever you are, if, if you're... If you're watching this, don't, don't, I want you to watch me, but I really want you to think about your own life and think about the times where you needed and was granted a do-over. Thank God for spiritual do-overs. Words that I shouldn't have said that I did. And God gave me another chance to get it right. Things that I shouldn't have done, but I did. But God gave me another chance. And so when we come to worship, our worship like takes into consideration everything that God has done and also everything that you have done. And when you think about the things that you have done and put them in comparison to what God has done, you can't help but give God a praise for a do-over. Is there anyone at home that can thank God for a do-over? Some of you have gotten do-overs in your relationships. Some of you have gotten do-overs on your job. Some of you are students and you got a chance to do it over. Thank you, God, for every day giving me the opportunity to do it again. And so we're here in Jesus' name. 
thanking God for a do-over. Come on, bless God with me, my brothers and sisters. We serve an awesome God that specializes in do-overs. I want to thank Deacon Kelvin Roberson um, for, for those kind words, 17 years. I'm amazed that it's been that long. I was like, wow, 17 years. This is like a high school junior. I'm going into my senior year. <laughs> but I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful. Um, would you bow your heads for a word of prayer? God, we thank you now for all that we have experienced thus far. Thank you for the do-overs. Thank you for the, the opportunity we had to give. Thank you for worship and song. Thank you for, for the events that we have in this upcoming week. But now, God, we ask that you help us to center our attention on your word. We're asking for your help to center us because there are so many distractions right now. Distractions in our home. Distractions in, in our community. Distractions all around us, even our personal devices. We are easily distracted, but help us, God, at this moment to focus on your word. We sit attentively at your table, waiting to be fed by you. Provide us with spiritual nourishment. Remind us of, of the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ and because of Jesus Christ. Jesus, we thank you for doing what no one else could do. So bless now this word, dear God. Use me for your glory. And as always, whatever comes from it, you take the credit because it all belongs to you. Now, there might be someone, God, who is in bondage, someone who is, who is enslaved, someone who, who doesn't have a relationship with you. My prayer is that this message will lead them to you and that you will break, break their chains of bondage, set them free, give them a new lease on life and discover wholeness in you, Jesus Christ. We thank you now for this this message, have your way, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. My brothers and sisters, I want to call your attention to the gospel of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 21 will be our context for the scripture this morning. Listen, whatever you have, uh, whatever translation you might be reading, you, you can read that. It's here on your screen. You can follow along with us. Luke chapter 4 beginning in verse 14, it reads this way. Jesus returned to Galilee, powerful in the spirit. News that he was back spread through the countryside. He taught in their meeting places to everyone's acclaim and pleasure. He came to Nazareth where he had been raised. As he always did on the Sabbath, he went to the meeting place. And when he stood up to read, he was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written, verse 18, God's spirit is on me. He's chosen me to preach the message of the good news to the poor, sent me to announce pardon to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burdened and the battered free, to announce this is God's time to shine. And he rolled up the scroll handed it back to the assistant and sat down. And every eye in the place was on him, intent. And then he started in. You've just heard scripture make history. It came true just now in this place. I want to focus in on verse number 19. This is God's time to shine. Amen. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to share with you from this subject, Freedom Day. Freedom Day. This coming Saturday, June 19th, 2021, marks the celebration of Juneteenth. Now, in all honesty, Juneteenth really, in some parts of our country, never had the impact that it had until recently. Last year this time, 
our country was undergoing a, a, I call it a people's revolution. Black, not, not, not only black lives mattered, but, but the understanding of the injustices that were done to people of color. We were struggling with, wrestling with, grappling with the, the senseless killing of both George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, along with many others. And so as Juneteenth rolled around last year, African Americans and people of color throughout this country took a different perspective on this day we call Juneteenth. And so since we are just six days away from celebrating Juneteenth, I, I wanted to, to sort of raise that up for you, but also shed it or, or share with you a different perspective of this whole Juneteenth, the day we call Freedom Day. January 1st, 1863, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which stated that all states that had slaves were to set them free. So on January 1st, 1863, all slaves were given their freedom by the President of the United States. And as the Civil War was continuing to go on, it took another two and a half years for residents in Galveston, Houston, and Austin, Texas to be free. June 19th, 1865, General Gordon Granger, a Union general, made his way to Galveston, Texas to announce the Emancipation Proclamation and to free slaves. Hard to imagine that after two and a half years that people of color were still enslaved in Texas. And there were many who criticized or, or, or critiqued the fact that, that they were still there. Some blamed it on the news. Maybe, maybe they hadn't received word. But as historians have recorded, there were well over 100 newspapers in Texas between 1863 and 1865 that wrote about the Emancipation Proclamation. So it wasn't the fact that the news wasn't there and the news hadn't reached the slaves. It was because of the Texas Confederate Constitution. And in their constitution, they prohibited menumission. That's the word for today. Menu mission. And menu mission was the freeing of slaves. So, regardless of what Abraham Lincoln said, the Texas Confederate Constitution said you're not allowed to free slaves. In fact, it was breaking the law. And it wasn't until Granger came, here it is, not only with the Emancipation Proclamation declaring that, but he also came with the forces to set them free. Yes. It's one thing for it to be announced, but it's another thing for it to be enacted. And I kept considering if Granger had not come, he and his Union soldiers, quite possibly they would have still been enslaved for another year or two, but but Granger came not only with the word, but Granger came with the power to free. And my brothers and sisters, I, I wanted to use that this morning because uh, uh, there are those of you that ought to be celebrating your freedom. Now, there are different types of freedoms to be celebrated this morning. First and foremost, we as people of color, we ought to be able to celebrate this Emancipation Proclamation. Our ancestors were slaves. Oftentimes in history and when it's discussed by historians, they talk about the most atrocious things done to human beings. We talk about the Holocaust. The Holocaust. We, we talk about the things that are taking place even in Africa right now. We, we talk about the genocide that takes place in, in some of the, the Eastern uh, uh, European countries. But, but 
for us as people of color here in these United States for well over 400 years, there was nothing more atrocious than our ancestors having to be slaves. We, we helped to build an economy. We helped to build a nation. And so once Lincoln declared that we were free, we still had to struggle with, some had to struggle with, that even though it was declared, we had no one to fight for our freedom. And so all of us ought to be able to celebrate our freedom, freedom to live, freedom to move here in these states. But then we have some personal freedoms to celebrate. Just recently I was watching, of course, something on the internet, and, and there was a woman and her girlfriends, uh, now that the pandemic has lifted and travel is, has eased, she and her girlfriends traveled and she filmed herself recording, uh, she recorded herself, her and the girls took a time away and visited some place and had a divorce party. From the alimony money that she got or whatever she got from, from the divorce settlement, all expenses paid trip for her girls and they went and celebrated it. And with that, as she was recording herself with a drink in her hand, she said, this toast is to the man who helped pay for my trip and my freedom. Wow. Many ways to celebrate freedom. There was a father right outside of the Richmond, Virginia area, Northern Virginia, just this past week, or actually the first week of June, pulled up to his ex-wife's home and unloaded $800 worth of pennies on the front lawn. And the wife, you could hear her talking, screaming out, what are you doing? What is that? He said, this is my last child support payment. $800 worth of pennies. He was celebrating his freedom. Some of you have freedom parties of celebrating freedom from debt, freedom from school. There's some graduates who are celebrating right now free from school. We all have ways of celebrating our freedom. And Juneteenth, this coming Saturday, will be a reminder, it's a day to celebrate. But as you celebrate, as you celebrate your freedom from your mortgage and your freedom from your bills and your freedom from school and maybe even freedom from some relationships, there is a freedom that all of us can celebrate. That even if I'm not a person of color, I can still celebrate it. That even if my ancestors weren't enslaved or my ancestors weren't in the Holocaust or my ancestors didn't come from Eastern Europe, we can all celebrate this freedom. As I shared with you, um, General Granger went to Galveston and announced to the slaves that they were free. It wasn't that quite possibly they hadn't heard the news. They just didn't have anybody to fight for their freedom. And so Granger came not only with the word, but he came with the power. And in Luke chapter 4, there's another man who arrives on the scene. There, there, there are parks and statues um, who commemorate and celebrate the life of General Gordon Granger. But there was one who came well before uh, General Granger. Yes, his name was Jesus. Luke records that uh, all that has transpired with his birth. And in chapter 4, as his ministry is just beginning, he goes into the wilderness. He's tempted by Satan. He comes out of the wilderness empowered and ready to begin this ministry. And here's what blew me away in reading this text this week, is that as Jesus is starting this ministry, his reputation is growing, and Luke records the first public thing that he does is go into the temple and read from the scroll of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to give good news to the poor, to set the captives free, to help the blind to see, and to free those who are burdened and oppressed. Wow. Listen, um, um, Deacon Roberson made an announcement about my anniversary, 17 years, 
being a pastor. In this day and age of, of preaching and pastoring, unfortunately, just like with many other things in this world, it, it's become about the notoriety and the fame. It, it's become about making a name for yourself. It's become about amassing as much as you can in some circles, not all. And I thought about that as I looked at the life of Jesus, because as he's beginning this ministry, this is Jesus now, the one who was born of a virgin, Jesus, the son of God. As he's starting his ministry, his earthly ministry, he is he is proclaiming the good news to those who haven't received good news. And he's talking about what he's going to do for others. This ain't the modern day Jesus. Most would start out talking about what they may do for others, but what they're going to get for themselves. But Jesus declares by reading this scroll that I am here. I am here to set some folk free. Wow. God has given me everything I need to help set you free. This is freedom day. And as Jesus is reading from the scroll, he is reading the emancipation for humanity. For all who have been chained by sin and Satan, Jesus is declaring, I've come to set you free. Is there anyone that can thank God for setting you free? Is there anyone that can be reminded of what their life used to be like before God, before Jesus, and think about where you are right now, and you can't help but declare, he set me free. I know that there were slaves in Galveston and Houston and Austin who wanted to be free, but they had no one to fight for their freedom. What is it like when you want to be free, but you can't do it yourself? I need somebody. I need somebody that is stronger than I am. I need someone that has more power than I have. I need someone that cares about me and my freedom and my liberty. And Jesus comes on the scene and declares that I am the one. I'm not here to win popularity contests. I'm not here to gather a million followers with likes and dislikes and heart emojis. I'm not here to be transported in first class automobiles and, 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 and first class privileges. I've come to set you free. I've come to give you that in which you can't give yourself. Jesus says it's not about me, but it's all about you. What kind of savior is that? that comes and declares, this is not about me, it's all about your freedom. And just as I believe General Granger arrived in Galveston and made his way to those plantations to declare, you all are set free, it's one thing to read what the emancipation says, but I believe Granger showed up with his troops and declared, you are free. That whoever and whatever has been holding you back, they got to let you go. Somebody ought to be shouting right now because God showed up in some of your situations and declared to those who had you bound, you got to let them go. Set them free. And here you are enjoying the freedoms that we have. Jesus shows up in his hometown and he reads from the scroll of Isaiah. A few things that Jesus shares with us on this Freedom Day. What well, one is, Jesus says, I've come to encourage those with some good news. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about every now and then you've got to encourage yourself. And that is true. But sometimes your situation will be so bleak and blighted. Sometimes your stuff will be so messed up that you can't even see or, or find, find it within you to encourage yourself. But that's when I go to the Word. That's when I look at the Gospels of Jesus Christ. That's where I can find encouragement. I find encouragement in the Word of God. So if everything else around me is, is falling apart, is everything else around me is collapsing, I can go to the Word and I can be encouraged in the Word. I can be encouraged by what he did for the blind. I can be encouraged by what he did for those who were, who were enslaved. I can be encouraged for that man in that cemetery. I can be encouraged by that woman at the well. And I can say if Jesus did it for them, he can do the same for me. Is there anyone that has been encouraged by the word? 
Yeah, there were times, there were times, there were times. There were times when I was still in my situation while reading the word. But while reading the word and knowing I was still in my situation, I was able to give God praise even though I was still in my situation because I knew that if Jesus worked it out in this text, that Jesus is going to work it out in my life. And someone needs to be encouraged right now that weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming in the morning. Jesus says, I've come to encourage. I've come to get some good news. I'm tired of the bad news. I'm tired of all of the villains and scoundrels that get front page headlines. Jesus says, I've come with some good news to the poor. Jesus says, I've also come to emancipate. I've come to free. What I learned when you study the history is that, is that history records that, 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 that Abraham Lincoln wasn't hell bent on freeing slaves. Now, this was a political move. This was a move, yes, he made based upon his moral judgment, but it took him years to make this decision. Country has gone to war. Country was split in half. That's when Lincoln said, I've, I've got to make this decision. Wasn't that difficult for Jesus? He took on the assignment, and once he arrived, his whole world was that we all would be free. Jesus not only came to encourage, but he also came to emancipate. Jesus came to set you free. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. Jesus came to set you free. And Jesus is saying to someone right now watching this video, it was not my father's design to create you to be enslaved. You are not to be enslaved by an individual. You are not to be enslaved by a job. You are not to be enslaved by debt. Jesus says, I've come that you might be free. You are not to be enslaved by fear. You are not to be enslaved by insecurity. You're not to be enslaved by inferiority. You were designed to be free. And who the Son sets free, that's John chapter 8, whom the Son sets free, you're free indeed. Is there anybody watching right now that can declare I'm free? I'm talking about I'm free. I was in a conversation yesterday with some friends, and they were talking about um, returning to church, returning, you know, to church when church would assume. And, and, and I was saying, I said, you know what? After 15 months of this, one of the things that, that I know about myself right now is that I'm free. Yeah, I'm free, y'all. And some of y'all are going to discover it soon enough. But I'm free. It's because when God has brought you through some things, when God has brought you over some stuff, that you, 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 you don't have time for the pettiness. I'm free. I, I'm free from that. I'm free from being negative. I'm free from talking about folk. I'm, I'm free from that. I'm, I'm free from trying to beat people over the head to help situations out. I'm free from that. I'm free from wasting my time on stuff that will reap or gain nothing in return. I'm free. Don't have time for it. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And refuse. And there are some who can't wait to go back. Can't wait to go back talking. Can't wait to go back looking at. Can't wait to go back sitting but doing nothing. I'm free. Jesus has freed me up through this situation. And he's come to free you up. He came not only to encourage. He came not only to emancipate. But he also came to empower. So here's the thing, though. As General Granger released the slaves, there is no account for what he did for the slaves. The great migration, my brothers and sisters, our ancestors who moved from the south to the north, began at the Emancipation Proclamation because their assumption was there were better opportunities up north. So, so Granger shows up, watch this, with the word, that's the Emancipation Proclamation. He shows up with the power, that's the Union soldiers. And once he frees them, though, he doesn't empower them. I don't know where he went. I don't know where he retired to. But it wasn't his responsibility 
to take care of the slaves or the now freed slaves. His job was just to set them free. What good is it to free someone and they're not empowered? There was a study that was done on a dog, specific dog on dogs, but one in particular who was raised in an abusive environment. The dog had an owner who mistreated that dog day upon day. Malnourished, abused, chained up, not free. Some, some people who work for the ethical treatment of pets, PETA, came and freed the dog from that owner, put the dog in the shelter, cleaned it up, got it some food. And the ironic thing was the dog escaped from the shelter and went back to the home that the dog lived at. And, and, and what they concluded was because the dog wasn't offered a better environment, a permanent environment, that the dog went back to what it was used to. My brothers and sisters, I'm here to celebrate Freedom Day. I'm here to celebrate that Christ not only encourages me, Christ has set me free, but Christ empowers me. Christ now has not only freed me up, but I am empowered. Yeah, I can do all things, Paul says, through Christ that gives me strength. Christ gives me the power not to go back, but to move forward. And Christ is saying to someone right now, you've got a permanent resting place in me. Cast your cares upon me because I care for you. So how will you celebrate your freedom day? Listen, if a divorcee can celebrate by traveling and giving her friends an all expenses paid trip, if a man can dump uh, well over uh, uh, thousands of pennies on the front lawn, if we can celebrate mortgages by burning them up, how can we celebrate our spiritual freedom? I believe that whenever we think about the goodness of God and the freedom that we have, we ought to be free to celebrate and worship. I don't want my worship to be confined or constrained by the thoughts and views of others. I want to be able to celebrate what God has done. This past week, I was in Dayton, Ohio, and um, was sitting there watching The Price is Right with my mom. And, um, and there was a woman who won, won some money, and she couldn't stop dancing, just couldn't stop dancing. They cut to commercial, and while they cut to commercial, she was still dancing. And I thought about that woman, because that woman will receive that check. That woman will have to pay taxes, and that money will be gone before she knows it. But she's still dancing and celebrate, and even after it's long gone, she'll probably still be talking about what she won on The Price is Right. Well, I'm here just to tell somebody that the gift that we have in Jesus Christ is better than any gift that we can get on a game show. It's greater than any materialistic thing. We have the gift of Jesus, and since it's Freedom Day, I might as well get my freedom praise on, and there is no one that can stop me from praising God in the manner in which I want because you don't know what he's done for me. You you don't know where he found me you don't know how he released me but I thank God that I am free right now and in the words of Martin Luther King I'm free at last free at last thank God Almighty I'm free at last is there anybody praising right now can you praise him for your freedom praise him because he encourages you praise him because he's freed you praise him because he's empowering you right now it shouldn't take June 19th for you to celebrate Freedom Day. Every day is a day of freedom because I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I pray that you've been blessed by this worship experience. Juneteenth, we're going to celebrate, but I'm celebrating my freedom every day. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, 
and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for saving me. We look forward to having you join us next Sunday. Same time, same channel, 10 a.m. as we will celebrate Father's Day. My brothers and sisters, have a blessed week. Inspirational call, 6.30 a.m. this Wednesday. Juneteenth celebration at East Orange General Hospital at, from noon until 2. Bible study, chapter 9, this Thursday. Credit unions open. We're here for you. Christ has set you free. Live in your freedom. Amen. Yeah.